Sig, eh? This is for all you Canadians out there. So in the midst of flu season, many people's attentions turn to the flu vaccine. But keep in mind that the flu vaccine is by no means a guarantee that you won't get the flu. Not taking into account all the potential side effects it is reported to only be at most 10% effective. But there is a way to improve your immunity against not only the flu, but also other viruses, bacterial infections, yeasts, environmental toxins, food sensitivities, and even autoimmunity. The secret lies in what immunologist Aristo Vajdani, PhD, calls nature's vaccine, secretory IgA, or SIG-A for short. So SIG-A are immune cells that are the first line of defense between you and the world. They primarily reside in mucous membranes, which is very wide ranging. This includes the digestive tract, respiratory tract, urinary tract, prostate, and the vagina. SIG-A cells are found in mucus, tears, saliva, sweat, breast milk, and other secretions. When we do a stool analysis, this is often one of the many markers we look at to see how healthy your gut is and functioning and what your immune system is like. Your gut houses about 70% of your immune system after all. So it has a big effect on your health. If your gut isn't healthy, chances are neither are you. These SIG-A cells are the first to encounter invaders and sequester them so they are not dangerous to the body. This helps prevent the immune system from overreacting so it's not prone to food sensitivities, chemical sensitivities, and most importantly, autoimmunity. Many people have low SIG-A. Unfortunately, having low SIG-A levels is pretty common these days. It's most often seen in individuals with adrenal fatigue who show symptoms of chronic tiredness, low blood sugar, difficulty getting up in the morning, depression, anxiety, salt cravings, and chronic illnesses. And that last one is just about every patient I see in my office. So you can see just how important this little known marker SIG-A is. Fun fact. Taking corticosteroids and NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, can also lower SIG-A levels. Low SIG-A levels increases cold and flu risk. Chronically low SIG-A levels have a number of consequences. The most obvious is that you're more likely to get sick frequently. For instance, if your respiratory tract is low in SIG-A cells, the viruses and bacteria it encounters are going to have an easier time invading your system. Low SIG-A leads to food and chemical sensitivities. What's perhaps more frustrating is that low SIG-A levels can lead to the development of food and chemical sensitivities. Why? Your SIG-A plays a pivotal role in your ability to tolerate the world around you while responding appropriately to pathogens appropriately being, being the key word. And this is why. When there's not enough SIG-A to neutralize incoming bacteria, viruses, yeast, undigested food, chemicals, and so on, the immune system must deploy its more aggressive immune cells. This basically causes an overreaction to every little immune system attack. It's like calling the Navy SEALs because the police force has gone missing. The result is a hyperreactive immune system that creates a permanent loss of tolerance in the bloodstream to certain foods and or chemicals. Low SIG-A raises risk for autoimmunity. One of the more unfortunate risks of SIG-A, low SIG-A, is that it raises your risk of developing autoimmunity. With a diminished defense from low SIG-A, your immune system is on constant red alert and your body is more vulnerable to pathogens. Between the increased exposure to pathogens and a hyperreactive immune system, it's just a matter of time before it starts attacking your own tissue and you get an autoimmune disease. This can be anything from lupus, scleroderma, RA, multiple sclerosis, ankylosing spondylitis, temporal arteritis, and many other conditions. So, go get your SIG-A tested. SIG, eh, Canadians. Boost it, nurture it, care for it, and just be aware of it. It can make all the difference in the world. I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy. Be happy.